Hi, my name is Anshul. I am a junior studying computer science and statistics. And this semester, I worked with Professor Stephens Martinez and Professor Roger to develop an online study tool that would allow computer science 101 students to answer questions and the instructors to collect and analyze the data to make sure that students are learning as effectively as possible. So a little bit about the product. Um, as I mentioned, it's an online tool with multiple choice questions for um, CompSci 101 students. And the material spans um, every concept in the entire curriculum. And as you can see from the image on the right, students can actually customize um, how many ever questions they want and can choose which concepts and how many concepts they want on a certain quiz. There's also the data analysis portion of the app. Um, it offers individualized data analysis by giving each student something called a mastery level for every concept that they have answered questions and submitted quizzes for. Um, now exactly what this mastery level is, is a rolling algorithm that is updated every time a student submits a quiz for a certain concept. Um, you can see based on this formula that we attribute 40% of the weight for the mastery level to the total score on the first n minus one quizzes that a student takes, and then 60% weight to the most recent or nth quiz that a student has just submitted. Um, of course, we're only able to provide a mastery level if a student has answered enough questions. Otherwise, um, there's simply not enough data to provide an accurate measurement. So um, as long as a student has answered five questions, we can offer this um, mastery level. So the database consists of three different tables, um, questions, responses, and students. Um, the main takeaways from this is just that on the responses table, we actually collect um, a time stamp for every quiz that is submitted. And this is extremely important because it allows the people who analyze the data, for example, the instructors, to get a chronological timeline of how students are um, taking certain quizzes. Um, and so to analyze and understand the data, um, there's kind of two different aspects of the data analysis. The first aspect is how students are actually studying. Um, this is stuff like how many quizzes are taken, the number of questions on quizzes, um, and something that I developed called um, a study session, um, which is basically how many ever times um, a student sits down at their computer um, and answers back-to-back -back quizzes without getting up and taking a break. And the way that I calculated this was um, if a quiz was taken within 15 minutes of a previous quiz, then those two quizzes were included in the same study session because it's very likely that the student took a quiz, reviewed what they got correct and incorrect, um, and then immediately after they started taking this next quiz. Um, so this belongs to the same study session because the student took these quizzes without getting up and, and leaving. Um, the second aspect is understanding student results. So I wanted to answer questions like, how do I measure student improvement? Um, when do students stop studying a specific concept? And also comparing between interleaving and not interleaving. Um, this is basically when a student has multiple concepts in a single quiz. Um, that's when a student use, is using interleaving. Um, when a student is not using interleaving, it's when there's only one concept on the quiz. So I'm trying to see whether um, introducing multiple concepts forces students to have to um, use another skill of being able to identify the concept that they're being asked and then correctly apply the concept. So in terms of what we were able to gather from the data, there was a total of 354 um, study sessions, that custom feature that I described earlier that we had to develop. Um, there was over 800 quizzes taken with almost 6,000 questions answered. And the figure on the right shows that about 140 students used multiple quizzes in a session, which means that they took back-to-back -back quizzes without getting up, whereas uh, over 200 just had a single quiz in a session. Um, here's a distribution of the number of questions per quiz. Uh, as you can see, there is a pretty big peak at five. Um, that's because the, the, cus the, the default option for the number of questions on a quiz is five, 
but you can see that uh, quite a few students, in fact, the majority of students um, had five or fewer questions on their quiz. Then a little bit about interleaving. Remember how often students are mixing multiple concepts together. Um, when students used interleaving, they had on average more than five different concepts covered, which is um, much higher than I expected. That's a really significant result actually. Um, looking at the figure on the left is just a distribution for um, the number of concepts per quiz. Uh, and the graph on the right just shows that um, a pretty significant majority of students didn't use interleaving in their quizzes, but since we had 330 quizzes um, that had multiple concepts, we do have enough data in both categories to kind of compare and contrast those different types of quizzes. Um, now the next part of the data analysis is trying to analyze student results. And remember those questions that I asked earlier, um, the main goal is to just get a clear sense of how students uh, ended a study session and, and when they decided to stop. So one way that we can do that is actually by measuring improvement um, based on the score differential between the first quiz and the last quiz that they take in an, uh, a specific concept. So you can see that when on the x-axis, there's the number of quizzes taken for a specific concept. Um, the reason two, three, and four uh, categories are circled is because the vast majority of the data actually belongs in these three categories. Um, the last six data points that you see on the right side of the graph um, is uh, based on a really small sample size. So mostly focusing on those first three categories, you can see that students tended to stop answering questions after about a seven to eight percent increase in their score from the first quiz that they took, indicating that students wanted to see an improvement and then decided to stop answering questions. Um, and here is a comparison of interleaving versus non-interleaving. Um, on average, you could see that interleaving quizzes tended to have a lower score. Um, in fact, like the 25 percentile um, is lower on the interleaving side and um, the, the bar that extends down from the, the interquartile range is also lower for the interleaving. Um, in fact, there's almost a 2% difference in the average score, which is relatively significant considering we have um, hundreds of quizzes for each of the two cat categories. And finally, coming, coming back to this um, mastery level metric that we developed, um, we wanted to see what the average mastery level was after a student stopped answering questions for a specific concept. Um, ideally, we want this mastery level to be between 0.85 and 0.9. In fact, on the online tool, we mentioned that once you get between 0.5 and 0.85 and 0.9, um, you're, we're relatively confident that you have mastered the material. Based on this distribution, um, and since we have an extremely high peak and mode at one, um, and the vast majority of the, of the students seem to have a mastery level above 0.9, we're relatively confident with these results. Um, in fact, there's an argument to be made that maybe the questions are too easy and that next semester, when we continue working on this project to have um, harder and more difficult questions. Um, and that actually brings us to this final section about what the future holds for this project. In fact, this summer, um, there's a CS Plus summer project about it where students are focusing on the front end, the web design using uh, HTML and CSS to give the website a more modern look. Um, and finally, during the next two semesters, next school year, um, I'll be continuing to work on this project. I remember talking to Professor Stephens Martinez about maybe implementing Bayesian knowledge tra tracing, which is um, a probability and statistics model for being able to measure how much a student has truly mastered a concept. Um, a much more advanced implementation of the, the mastery level that we were shooting for this semester. Um, and finally, I want to add a feature to allow instructors to add questions instead of relying on me to um, design a question template and, and randomly generate data structures and variables to fill that template, um, passing control off to Professor Stevens Martinez or Professor Roger um, would be optimal because once I graduate, then we would be able to continue this project. Um, and that's it. Thank you for listening to my project. I had a great time working on this and I look forward to developing it more in the future. Thank you.